Since its market debut in 2017, Celsius has been bubbling up explosive growth for investors. The stock surged nearly 60% in 2023 and looks to extend those gains in 2024. The company positions its beverages as healthy energy drinks that are marketed toward younger consumers and fitness enthusiasts with the help of influencers and celebrities like Olympian Sean White and YouTuber turned boxer Jake Paul. A 2022 partnership with PepsiCo helps Celsius expand its distribution channels and gain market share. And seemingly, the energy drink was everywhere. The company already has an established global footprint, offering products in 10 countries and looking to enter more markets. But the company's turbocharged performance has set a high bar, leaving investors and Wall Street to wonder if Celsius's fast pace of growth is sustainable. On this Growth Story Spotlight, we speak to Celsius CEO John Fieldley to get his take on the energy drink market and the growth drivers pushing Celsius forward in the year ahead. John, thanks so much for joining us today. Glad to be here. Thanks for having us. All right. So looking at the monster growth that Celsius has had, you know, you hit 1.3 billion in sales last fiscal year. You've seen triple digit growth over the last few years. You've notched record revenue in Q1. And I think a lot of investors are looking at this performance and wondering how you're going to keep the pace up. So I'm wondering, what do you see as the big growth drivers for Celsius? Yeah, it's it's phenomenal. I mean, uh, we're really the first brand in the energy category to break 10 share on a national level in the United States in uh, over a decade. So um, it, it's really exciting. We're really hitting on three of the fastest growing really mega trends in food and beverage. And one of those is everyone wants better for you, but they don't want to sacrifice flavor or taste. We taste great, got over seven essential vitamins. The second mega trend is everyone wants more function in the foods and beverages we consume. And Celsius does more than just provide you energy. It also offers you functional benefits on thermogenic properties and additional fat burning and calorie burning. And then the third mega trend is fitness, is hip, cool, sexy, premium. We were born in the fitness channel and now we're positioned for broad mass appeal. So leveraging that opportunity. And then the other growth driver we're looking for is we're really backdooring the energy category and we see huge opportunities in the convenience channel where about 70% of energy drinks are sold. Right now we're at a 10 share um, and we're looking for big resets this year. So every year re retailers reset and uh, we expect resets to be done by the end of June this year, which will be the largest in company history and getting ready for summer selling season. Yeah, so since you mentioned some of those mega trends, then what new products and innovations can customers expect to be coming from Celsius? Well, one thing we've been really well, great on is flavor innovation. So we just launched a Galaxy Vibe, which is an amazing uh, strawberry combination twist. Uh, we also have a blueberry lemonade that we launched at 7-Eleven this year, which is totally refreshing. Our goal is to bring the most refreshing energy drinks this summer, keep everyone energized with essential energy to live fit and make it a great summer. So flavor trends are super critical for us and the teams are doing a great job. We just launched a Celsius Essentials line which is a 16 ounce can with essential vitamins. And uh, we're looking to take the category by storm. And in terms of headwinds, I know there were some analyst questions about factors that might impact cost of goods sold this fiscal year. And I'm wondering if you can shed any light on what may impact margins moving forward. Yeah, the first quarter of 2024, we had great margins around 51% gross profit, uh, good EPS as well. Um, you know, when we look forward, you see, see headwinds, you're hearing a lot about aluminum pricing and freight. So we're becoming cognizant of that um, as we go forward. We're trying to find leverage as we continue to grow and scale, but we're going to have to see how, the, how it turns out over the next several quarters and as we progress with further inflation uh, that potentially could be uh, hitting some of these raw materials and input costs for us. And so then for Celsius, would the priority be then to maintain those profit margins? Or are you going to focus more on sales? Yeah, I think coming out of our earnings call, we said we'd be in the upper, you know, mid 40s uh, within gross profit. Um, you know, we're investing in the brand. We got a lot of great investment uh, in marketing programs that are planned this summer. Uh, we're looking to drive profitable growth. And, um, you know, we're excited where we are right now, um, coming off a record quarter. Our partner partnership with PepsiCo in North America has never been stronger. We got a great partner. We just started to expand internationally as well. So we see some great opp opportunities internationally over the next several years. So it's an interesting time at Celsius, an interesting time in the energy category, as what's interesting is that Celsius is bringing new consumers to the category. So 
about 47% uh, within Q1 of 2024. Celsius drove about 40, 47% of the category growth, uh, which is just really astonishing and shows you were incremental. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that growth and how much of that uh, consumer core are new customers versus people that are just, you know, maybe switching brands and trying Celsius and liking it and staying with it. Yeah, that's one thing. Mintel came out with a report last week and shows the categories anticipated to grow about 8.8% this year and still and have continual growth for the next several years. So the category is growing, bringing new consumers in. And Celsius is one of those key drivers. So that's the story for the retailer and why they need to contain and build their sets larger with Celsius. Uh, we're working on additional expanded cold availability uh, and our continued marketing and household penetration continues to increase. We're up to about a 29% household penetration, almost doubled it in the last 12 months. So the teams are doing a really good job. And you mentioned some expansions, and I know you are definitely expanding globally. Uh, you just entered Australia, New Zealand. So I'm wondering what um, what are maybe some of the key geographic markets that you're targeting for growth? Yeah, well, we just signed a distribution agreement for Australia, New Zealand, and France. So those will be rolling out in the Q4 of this year. So, And then we do a slow, methodical approach with further scale in 25. Where we're expanding right now in April is United Kingdom and Ireland. So we just started to uh, distribute product uh, within there and select retailers and fitness clubs. And we're going to continue to build uh, distribution. But UK, uh, Ireland, France, um, Australia, New Zealand are, are right in our uh, radar right now. And that's where we have distribution agreements signed and ready to execute. And do you expect growth to stabilize uh, somewhat as these new markets uh, come online and start contributing? Well, you know, it's hard to say as we go forward, we don't provide forward looking information uh, or forecast. But one thing we, we, we can you can look at is we're about a 20 share in North America on Amazon. And we've been holding that even though we've gained a massive amount of availability with the partnership with Pepsi. So we've been holding around a 20 share. And if you consider that an equal playing field as we these resets take place and you see we have a national share of about 11 and a half as of April 14th. Um, we can close. We feel we can close that gap and get closer. So we feel we got a lot of growth ahead, um, and new markets are just in all incremental. Right, and, and you mentioned Pepsi, and I think that was a, a huge brand partnership uh, for your company. And I'm just wondering, how has that been helping you to reach uh, new markets? And I know there's a, a new incentive plan on the table. So I'm wondering, you know, what will that help uh, solve for the company, or, or how is that going to push uh, growth forward? Yeah, well, I mean. We couldn't compete at the highest level in the energy category without Pepsi. So Pepsi's uh, partnership is extremely critical. Um, we're over at 98% ACV, which is availability. Just almost, you can find a Celsius just about at any retailer now. So really excited about that. Also, keeping us in stock with a big national distribution network is really critical in this really highly competitive space in the energy category. Um, the incentive program um, is really nothing unique we've run before. Just 62% of our revenue in North America is through Pepsi, and that's our largest customer. So we do disclose that through AK. So that incentive program uh, was disclosed, but we've run it's incentive programs with a variety of different uh, customers and sales employees and uh, even retailers we've run incentive programs. So it's really nothing ordinary out of the course of business. And then when you look at international, international opportunity with Pepsi and Suntory, who we're, we've partnered with in the variety of markets, um, that shows great potential and growth uh, as we go forward. But we really want to be focused on North America and timing and sequencing properly and in international, really focusing on a tactical approach and a profitable approach as we go forward. Are there any other key partnerships and collaborations uh, on your radar that might be on the horizon? Yeah, I think on a marketing front, um, we just partnered with Ferrari uh, with uh, we just actually in Miami, they had a great uh, which Miami I'm very race. excited. <laughs> it was phenomenal. We got on the podium. We had Jake Paul there. Uh, we had David Dobrik. Uh, we had a variety of other celebrities there. Uh, it was just a really great, great fun event for everyone. We got a lot of social radiation. Um, we also did uh, we were out at Coachella just a, a few months ago. We had a, a cosmic desert vibe, which is a company owned event. We had great artists, celebrities and influencers there. We're told it was one of the hottest parties. And we got a lot of stuff planned this summer, which is really cool and exciting to keep that momentum around behind the brand. So then what would you say then is key, you know, as you continue to expand market share uh, to maintaining that competitive edge? Well, it revolves around the consumer. We really need to continue to build our consumer base 
are going into additional verticals. One initiative we did this year is really connect with the Hispanic community. We see a great opportunity, especially with our great flavors. We partner with MLS this year, Inter Miami, and a variety of other clubs. Uh, we're entering, uh, further partnering with a variety of, of uh, songwriters and singers and musicians. And so we think that's a great opportunity. It's continued to expand as we get more distribution, as we get more reach and marketing dollars into additional verticals, telling everyone about Celsius, the central energy, and really the most refreshing energy in the world, really building that awareness, creating trial, and ultimately creating that loyalty. So then what would you say then is the biggest strategic priority for you in 2024? Biggest strategic priority right now in 24, closing the gap within convenience. We're in a 10 share right now in convenience. And if you look at large format, we're on a much larger share and we're a 20 share within the energy category on Amazon. So this is the last frontier. We're looking for great resets. Closing that gap in convenience is the largest, is the category, is the really the channel with the largest sales within the energy category almost about 70% of energy drinks are sold in convenience. So that's a really big opportunity for us. We're focused on that cold placements, better placements and educating that really that six to 9 a.m. consumer. Well, John, thank you so much for your great insights today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Cheers. Mm -hmm.